week ago, I took my Super Cub out for a test flight after it just came out of annual. I was excited to get out there to test it because I had a new JPI Engine Data Management EDM730 installed um, by my mechanic during the annual. Well, it turned out I had a little bit more excitement on that test flight than I planned on. Also, I got to test out some of the EDM730 new features sooner than I had planned on. Stay tuned. Back about nine days ago, after receiving a call from a mechanic reporting that my plane was out of annual and was all set to fly, I grabbed my flight bag and ran over to the airport to give it a short test flight and to check out the newly installed EDM730. Unfortunately, I did not bring my cameras along that I normally mount on the wings and in the cockpit. At the time of the flight, the METAR at Laconia New Hampshire Airport was reporting clear skies, winds out of the west at 10 knots, the temperature 37 degrees and the dew point 24 degrees, and the relative humidity 59%. After giving the plane a thorough pre-flight inspection, including sumping the fuel tanks and the fuel strainer, I started up the aircraft and let the engine warm up for a few minutes before taxiing and doing a run-up. As I did my run-up, I checked out the candlesticks on the new EDM730, particularly checking out the EGT and CHT levels for each cylinder, as well as looking at the digital output voltage reading. As part of the run-up, as usual, I also did a carburetor heat check both at the high and low RPM levels. The engine sounded great and the EGT and CHT levels looked fine. Five minutes later, I entered runway 26 with plans of doing a few laps in the pattern and then taking a short flight out over Lake Winnipesaukee. The first lap in the pattern went without a hitch. Max takeoff engine power was achieved on departure and the plane climbed swiftly up to pattern altitude as I turned onto the base leg. Due to the chilly temps and the Super Cub's large wing wanting to continually fly, I pulled back power to about 1400 RPMs, about two thirds down the length of the downwind to slow my airspeed. Laconia Airport's runway is about 6,000 feet long. After turning base, I brought the power back even further to around 1,000 RPM to lose altitude. Again, in cold weather, the Cubs' large wing just wants to fly. I turned final and did a nice short field landing, leaving me around 4,000 plus feet of runway before I finally break to a stop. After bringing up the flaps, I applied full power to the throttle and pushed gently forward on the stick. A couple of seconds later, I was airborne for my second lap in the pattern. This is when I got a little more excitement than I had planned on. About 100 feet off the ground and about halfway down the runway, all of a sudden the engine power dramatically decreased. It wasn't a cough or sputter of the engine, it was instead as if someone had suddenly pulled the throttle idle. There was that two second deer in the headlight perceived moment before I physically reacted, but fortunately my brain instantly started processing what to do and by the third second I was performing, yes the 3P model we were taught in our flight training. Processing, I thought I had lost the engine completely, saw about half the runway still ahead of me and decided I needed to land straight ahead immediately. I pushed the nose over uh, for best glide and dumped in all the flaps. As I saw precious runway rolling underneath me, I suddenly perceived that the engine was still running smoothly and propelling me forward, but at low RPM. Instead of turning on carburetor heat and trying to resolve the engine problem in flight, I made the instant decision to pull the throttle idle and forward slip the plane to land. Fortunately, that was the right decision I landed safely with about a thousand feet of runway to spare and was able to take a taxi off under the aircraft's own power. No emergency was declared. After clearing the whole short line, I applied full brakes and briefly throttled the engine up to about 1800 RPM. The engine ran smoothly and the EDM 730 showed that all four cylinders were operating fine. So I decided to call it for the day and taxi the plane back to my mechanic to take a look at it, but not before first doing a full uh, run up in the run up area. Again, the engine ran smoothly and the EDM 730 EGT and CHT temperature levels all looked good. After discussing the event with my mechanic and a couple of the other mechanics uh, and, air, and pilots nearby, it was our conclusion that I had experienced carburetor icing, probably brought on during the first long, low power setting landing approach. Normally, I only turn on and check carburetor heat when I'm nearing an airport after being cruised for any length of time. And after three years of owning my Super Cub and flying it regularly in cold weather, I have previously never experienced carb icing with it, nor any other Piper aircraft I've flown. I've got around 600 hours in various Piper aircraft. The only thing that was different with this flight compared to my other flights in this plane is that I had left the tanks half full for two or three weeks. Normally I always keep the tanks full, however I was anticipating going out with someone else and wanted to make sure I was going to be okay for weight and balance. Yes, the weather conditions were certainly ripe for carburetor icing, however I was surprised that it could possibly form so quickly with just one lap in the pattern. Admittedly, 
I had a low power setting for about two minutes coming in from my first landing. But again, I'm surprised it could happen so quickly into such a rapid effect on the engine performance. I'm curious if, what you might think. If you have any questions or ideas on, on what could have happened, leave a comment below. There was one other fuel starvation theory presented to me as a possibility for the sudden reduction of power. I spoke with a Piper Cub expert about my experience. He mentioned he too had personally had a similar incident as well as a colleague of his. Like me, when he had his fuel starvation incident, the weather was ripe for icing and he had gone out for a flight with half tanks. When he had this problem, he was at higher altitude and simply switched tanks to resolve the problem and land. It wasn't until a day later, however, that he noticed something was not right with one of his gas tanks. The one he had been on when his aircraft's engine had lost power suddenly. The gas cap had somehow been sucked partially into the gas tank, and after further inspection, he saw that the gas tank had been deformed. It became apparent to him that the tank had experienced a vacuum during flight and what must have led to the fuel starvation. What he concluded was that the two little vent holes in the fuel cap on the gas cap um, must have frozen over with ice buildup due to the cold, moist air outside the gas tank being sucked into a half-empty gas tank already half filled with cold and moist air. He described that the outside cold, moist air being pulled into the low pressure area inside the fuel tank via the small vent holes creates a venturi effect situation akin to what happens in a carburetor. This led to the vent holes freezing up in a vacuum being formed in the fuel tank, causing the deformation of the tank and the resulting fuel starvation to the engine. He suggested this is what happened to me and that when I landed, any ice on the gas cap vent holes was probably knocked off or shaken off and allowed the engine to then continue to operate normally. So I'm going to look a little bit more into this theory from this uh, Cub expert. And uh, I'm also going to have my mechanic take a look at the uh, gas tank in my aircraft just to make sure that he doesn't see any type of deformation in it. And I'm also going to consider possibly getting new gas caps with better uh, venting holes um, to ensure that I don't have this type of situation either occur again or occur for the first time. I'm also going to make sure that I fill my tanks after every um, use of the, the airplane, particularly during the winter months, so there's no moisture potentially uh, built up into those tanks. And lastly, I'm going to make sure I start using carburetor heat on my downwind and base leg, I'll probably turn off carbon on final, uh, to make sure I can check and remove any icing that may be occurring uh, so that on subsequent takeoffs um, that I don't run into this situation again where I lose a major reduction in power on takeoff. Anyways, curious if you've had a similar experience. If you did, um, comment below or if you've got some ideas, comment below. I appreciate getting some feedback and I um, hope you found this video useful, helpful, and if you did, consider uh, hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Mm -hmm.